she is a she is a former president last year, and uh, she did her internship with Goldman Sachs. Uh, very successful person, someone who's on the same as that as myself, and really respect her. So we have uh, amongst all the people that we have as uh, alumni, and I call them all great in, in terms of what they've done throughout their lives and how they've helped leaders. She's one. She's one of them. So. Just give us a round of applause for our work. You know, last year I was very famous for doing one thing. Um, I would always start with a stupid silly joke. Uh, I try to make people smile a little bit. I mean, I know I'm not that handsome, but it's okay. Uh, so this year I'm going to do something which I actually did last year. Sorry, I have to repeat the joke. Um, does anyone know what you call a deer with no eyes? No? No? Well, it's just a no idea. <laughs> what do you call a deer with no eyes and no legs? Well, yeah, that's right, still no idea. <laughs> okay, basically, I'm the chairman of Mutus in this current year. And, um, well, my story is similar to everyone else. Mutus has become a little bit like a baby to me. We try and build it up each year. It's hard to say the legacy something that we try and leave behind. Um, absolutely love the place. It's, it's been who I am in the past three years that I've been in university. And just like anyone else, I try and give back as much as I can. It has given me a lot, uh, on the other hand. Uh, just two days ago, I was meeting a hedge fund manager in London. So from where I come from, and then um, to, to have all, all this benefit, to me, this has been absolutely amazing. I'm sure I can provide you with, with anything that you wish, as long as you put in a little bit of commitment, we can give you that back. Right? So, um, yeah, one slight thing, if you want to know what my role is here, I'm just a little bit like the daddy. So, anyway, I don't think that was funny either, was it? Okay, so I'm just going to give you a small market roundup um, of what happened in the summer. Three uh, major issues, European debt crisis, American faltering economy, don't even know if my spelling is correct, um, and China slowed down. Yeah? Um, these are the main things that happened. I think they're most important, and if anyone has been watching the news, you'll see all this. So one of the main things is, well, of course, to start to this year, we had um, investor sentiment um, reducing after the LTRO because of some negative um, data that come, came out from Europe across, um, whether it was Spain or, or um, Italy or Greece. Right? So we all know what's happening with Greece. Um, Spanish is again, uh, 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 Spain's again requesting possibly going to request for a bailout. So that's a massive problem and it's a destabilizing the entire Eurozone. So during this period we had yields of Spanish bond reaching new highs, um, Italian reaching about 65%, and um, it was uh, just largely due to a push to safety because you know, a lot of investors have put a lot of money in, they want to make sure the money's safe, so they pushed the bond down, and if you don't know what that is, there's actually the German bond, so th those went back uh, to record lows. And um, the euro was on a massive downturn, as you've seen in there. Um, but what, what was really, really cool and, and what got me out trading when I uh, trained this, during this period was um, ECB, they, well, before they launched their, their unlimited bond buying program without a cap, um, Mario Draghi comes out in the news and say, in, in, in an interview in London, we'll do anything to save the euro. And they're like, what? What do you mean by that? Everyone was like, whoa, what do you mean by that? So, um, in, if you see, here, just around this point, this large bar, was exactly when, when he actually said that and everyone started pushing into the euro and thinking that he'll do something great. And there's a meeting two days later and he says nothing at all. It's nothing. And then you're like, what the hell's going on? So during that same period, you'll see the um, volumes dropping massively and there's a consolidation period and you kind of wonder why it didn't go up here, but it did, uh, even on, on the volumes. So the ECB started playing poker with the markets, and uh, when, when they launched the new bond buying program, which I think is absolutely genius, because they don't tell you exactly what, what the cap is, it's just gonna, they're just going to give you the protection, so you're going to go in and buy. And at 5.6% 5, 5 yield or 6% yield for either Spanish or Italian bonds, those are very, very good returns for bond managers. For anyone who really wants to invest in money, and that's pushing the euro up, as you can see. Now there's a near um, short movement, and that should be the case. It's a really period of time to start learning uh, financial markets. It always is a uh, certain level of correction. Yeah? So, Mario Draghi is a genius, but then there's obviously a long-term 
very good to Europe because one band means monetary easing and austerity means we could um, we got for, for GDP. The main problem with the euro is actually that GDP is um, declining, debt ratios are not reducing at the same level. So when you look at what they're doing, they're trying to have the short term measure where they're supporting the bonds and pushing the euro, but really what they should be doing is devaluing the euro and bringing up economic activity so they can actually reduce the debt to GDP ratio and bring up the credibility. Um, so when it, it is my view, um, and you should not take it from as 100%, um, that once uh, the protection against euro weakness um, goes too high, or the insurance costs, or option costs, um, uh, then you'll see the euro fall down, and that's not a very, very good thing. Because what it essentially means is a weaker euro means the eurozone, which is one of the biggest um, buyers in the world, will, and they already have reduced much of their um, purchases. And a lot of manufacturing countries like China, India, where you do see as masses go down, they're not going to be able to support the economy and it will be able to see a global shift downwards for at least the first half of next year. Yeah? Um, this is a small chart to show you the long term trend. It's, the previous chart I showed you was a daily chart, this is a monthly chart, and you can see it's a two year downward trend on the euro. Okay? Um, China slowed down, well, as you saw, uh, disappointing manufacturing data in June. But still got about 7.6% growth in the second half, which is really seems really good. But um, only one of the things is my dad actually went there for a for a fair and he said that there's just no one buying over that there's no more business activity. And if you read if you read the reports on on what's going on, um, the, the, the just investments have dropped, and that's one of the main main drivers of the Chinese economy. Now. If, if investments is your main um, support, there, there lies one major problem, is that you must have the output to, to fit for the return. So if you invest money, you're going to say, okay, I, I need some return, I need to sell some goods, if, I, if you actually bought a factory, and if that's not happening because the US and Europe are not buying, then there is a massive problem there. So industrial production growth just fell to a nine month low. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a, something that you want to look out for the China. But it's not going to still remain a massive growth market. Don't get me wrong. Um, Jim Rogers will always tell you that. You know, all the good China, China, China. But they're good. Just watch out now. Um, U.S. United States faltering economy. Unemployment has for a long time remained at 8.1, 8.3%. Now, Farm payroll recently came in at 96k, which is not good enough. They're aiming for 120k to actually match all the um, required new um, graduates and, and all the necessary unemployment to actually push it up in the long term. Um, again, I think the Fed was absolutely genius. I know everyone criticizes the Namke for the crisis, but no. Um, in this recent move, maybe it was a bit off in the previous minutes, but this one was really good. Um, on the long term side, uh, what he did was he introduced QE, and that was for mortgage buying. Now, if you understand the crisis that happened previously, it was based on a crash in the housing market. So if you actually props up the housing market by increasing the demand for it, then um, yields will go down, costs will go down, housing prices will go up, and the debt burden of, on individuals will reduce. If the debt burden in, on individuals reduces, means consumption increases. If consumption increases, the American economy starts going up. So I'd say absolute genius, look into America, but don't take my word for it, it's just my view. Um, near term, of course, um, pop money from QE will probably prop up market, push the dollar down, and um, yeah, that's a, that's a little bit about the United States in the near term and long term. Okay. Thank you very much. You are